What if every kingfisher on earth disappeared overnight? At first you might shrug. One bird less, no big deal. But without kingfishers diving into rivers, fish populations would explode. More fish means more organisms feeding on algae. This again means water plants disappearing, oxygen levels dropping and soon the pond becomes a stinky lifeless mess. And it's not just kingfishers. All organisms, even the ones that we are terrified of, help maintain balance in nature through their interactions. And in this video, we learn how different interactions among organisms help maintain a healthy balance in the ecosystem. And when I say interactions, I don't just mean the obviously helpful ones, but also the ones where organisms compete with one another, or the ones like between the kingfisher and the pondfishes, where one gobbles up the other. For example, plants in a forest compete for sunlight. Birds may compete for nesting sites on the same tree. We call these interactions competition. Now let's talk about the seemingly violent ones. A kingfisher enjoying a fishy lunch or a lion feasting on deer meat. These are examples of predation. It might look cruel, but predation is actually nature's way of controlling population size and keeping the ecosystem balanced. Without it, one species could multiply too much, causing an imbalance, just how we saw with the kingfisher disappearing. But not all interactions are about fighting or eating. Some are about living together, helping each other or sometimes even taking advantage of each other. Take bees and flowers for example. Bees feed on nectar from flowers and make honey from it. And in turn they help with pollination, which is the transfer of pollen grains from the male to the female parts of the flower. And this is super essential for flowering plants to reproduce. A similar partnership is seen between the roots of leguminous plants and the nitrogen-fixing bacteria called rhizobium. The bacterium fixes atmospheric nitrogen for the plant, while the plant gives the bacterium food and shelter. Such interactions where both organisms benefit are called mutualism. Can you think of more examples of mutualism? Maybe you can take some time for that, but for now, let's move on to commensalism, where one organism benefits, but the other isn't affected at all. For example, orchids grow on tall trees to get more sunlight, but the tree itself is not harmed. Or think of cattle agri, following the grazing cattle. The birds eat insects stirred up by the cattle, but the cattle don't really care. And finally, there is parasitism where one organism benefits while the other is harmed. Examples would be tapeworms in our intestines stealing nutrition making us sick, or ticks sucking blood from dogs making them itchy and ill. So whether it's competition, predation, mutualism, commensalism or parasitism, all these interactions are a part of the complex web we call an ecosystem.